So annoying when they do that, isn't it? Have a sign saying, keep out. We want to know what's going on in the construction site. And that's why I'm inviting you to take a look at what's happening here on my build. So on the YouTube channel for the next little while, we're going to be doing short videos, just summing up some of the progress that we're making on site. You ready? things before I head to the site. Look at this, one of my Christmas presents um, from Kay with my name on, very sad. It's all important. Um, oh, some money's fallen out. Hive's jacket, which is actually a cycling top. It's a bit uh, unusual, isn't it? And in here, wellies and a plastic bag because there is so much um, mud on site at the moment that it's just hideous. I think I'm ready to go. just need to get the car out. First, what am I building and why? Well, without going into too much detail, it's a family home built to passive house standard. This means the heating bills will be low, it'll be cheap to run, and it should be the most comfortable and healthy home I have ever lived in. There's nothing special about the build method we're using here. It's a traditional cavity wall masonry build. The real difference is in the attention to detail. Ah, this is my sight. Although it doesn't look much like this anymore. I think it's almost inevitable when you build at this time of year that there's going to be a fair amount of mud around. However, not all mud is equal. Take a look at this. Don't walk through this stuff. It doesn't even look very bad, it just looks like a little bit of sand. However, yeah, that's the problem. You go down into it. <laughs> Look at this stuff. And now it's stuck on my feet. Our main contractor, Mark, has already secured the site, set up the office and created a dedicated parking area. It's not a bad site as far as he's concerned. As a main contractor, it's, it's a nice site. There's lots of, lots of space and the space is in front of the building. Uh, very often you get a small amount of space in front of the building, a lot of space in the back garden, which you can't use once you've got the house up you can't store materials or or use very well one of mark's first jobs is pinpointing where the house will go the actual setting out we do very accurately so that that's that's you know within about five mil on the on the actual lines for setting out so we we, we set out for where the actual brickwork's going to go and then we mark the foundations from that so we've, we've always got the initial brickwork lines digging the foundations you have got a, a, a bit of play there's about 200 mil either side i think so what exactly are the foundations? The foundations that we've got here are concrete, the traditional concrete strip foundation. Very traditional, most houses built like it now, good 30, 40 years, probably more. Uh, simply dig a trench, pour some concrete in, obviously getting down to a good base to make sure that it's not going anywhere. Very, very simple, very traditional, very normal. This is also a cost-effective method of getting out of the ground, so long as the ground conditions can support a strip footing. There haven't been many surprises along the way, but it has been wet. The water has been filling the trenches for after, after rain, obviously. We've got a sandy, ballasty ground, which is very good for us because it means that the, we've got a nice solid base for build off. But what it also means is when it rains, the, the water just pours in from everywhere and it, it just it, it, it starts to fill the trenches. So, so we then have to pump, pump the water out, get rid of it and, um, and clean the bottoms up of the trenches to make sure we've got a nice solid base to, to concrete onto. Well, the concrete didn't come yesterday in the end. One of the pumping units broke down, but I'm pleased to report that today we're back in action and it's quite a lot going on. Just one lorry after the other. Concrete is very heavy. And so not only maneuvering the pump, but also you might be able to see them playing a game of fishing here with all the little timber strips down the channels. They're trying to fish them out before the concrete sets and that can be quite hard work. A lot of bending over as well. 
Ideally, we'd like to get all of the shuttering out as they pour. Most of it will come out, but if something gets left, no, it's, it's not catastrophic. Uh, it's sacrificial to some degree. Once the concrete has set, they go about levelling the site for the next steps. Quite a big moment. Our first blocks have arrived on site and we're going to get going, building up. Seems weird, doesn't it? It's happened so quickly. Next time we're looking at the beam and block foundation. Hit subscribe to be notified about all of our episodes. And if you want to go behind the scenes of my projects, join my free email newsletter.